بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمر وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة وبركاته ladies and gentlemen my name is Sumaya Hassan welcome to Aspire in today's show as part of our personal branding series we are going to talk about inshallah public speaking some people seem to have a natural gift of public speaking they appear to be fearless when standing in front of a group of people they are very artful and they are very eloquent in expressing themselves in a manner that's very compelling it's credible and it's memorable masha allah however this doesn't apply to everybody there is a large group of people for whom public speaking is terrifying it makes them anxious and sweaty and nervous it's something that they're just not comfortable at all uh, not not comfortable with at all and they would rather do anything than in stand in front of a crowd <clears throat> communication is a necessary and key skill in society but in this age of social media and short messages and short codes people unfortunately are losing the ability to communicate in a professional way somebody will use an acronym that they don't define you have no idea what they are talking about and yet according to them they are communicating now for the social environment that's different but for a professional work environment you're not delivering the message and that becomes a problem you may have the knowledge but are you able to communicate it in a way that the listener then understands what you mean so therefore if you possess and illustrate both the technical skills and communication skills this will give you a competitive advantage and so communication is one big marker of social solidarity and professional capability the good news is that it is possible to learn this skill it takes practice as do many things but in the end it is worth it and even if you are not somebody who needs to constantly stand in front of people it is worth your time investing in public speaking skills you've heard of the phrase elevator speech perhaps you have this business idea and the elevator speech imagines that what if you met the investor of your dreams in the lift and this person is in the lift with you for all of 20 seconds are you able to explain your idea in a compelling manner in 20 seconds to make this investor excited about your idea or at least intrigued to want to learn more and possibly even invest in it so the in the elevator speech is about your ability to condense in a very short amount of time a message in a manner that is so compelling that the listener gets what you are saying and probably is intrigued to want to have further engagement uh, with you or perhaps even invest or buy into your idea communication and public speaking could be one of your personal branding strategies it can help you cement your position as an authority in the industry but this has got to be combined with subject matter expertise if you're already an expert in your subject matter and you have the capability and the skill to communicate this to publicly you know speak about this in a manner that is compelling and convincing it can help to position you it may help to position you as a thought leader somebody who is recognized as an authority in their field of expertise that is knowledgeable that is known for being innovative and you then can become a go-to person in that particular niche public speaking is important for enabling you to deliver the message in the manner that you would want the message to be received you may have the information you may have the knowledge you may have the skill but if you are not able to deliver it effectively we all know the game we used to play as children broken telephone 
the way the message started at the beginning of the line and what was received and had at the end of the line is completely different. So to avoid a broken telephone analogy with your communication, it is important that you engage in public speaking um, skills, uh, development or enhancement so that you deliver the message in the manner that you intend for it to be um, delivered. As Muslims, Islam teaches us to communicate with honesty, to communicate with clarity, and with respect for others. And these same principles should guide our public speaking efforts. And so I would like to share some tips on how to improve our public speaking skills. Seven tips to be specific. The first tip, begin with Bismillah. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah An-Nahl, uh, chapter 16, verse 98, so when you recite the Quran, seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, the expelled. The highlight in this verse is that when you begin a task, and Allah here is talking about the Quran, but there's learning in this for us, what else can we apply this to? And pretty much anything, so long as it is halal, we should be able to apply this to that when we begin something, begin with the name of Allah. And this applies to your public speaking as well. As you start, you want to start with Allah's name because you are acknowledging that all success comes from him. And you're seeking his protection. You're seeking his blessings. You're seeking his, his protection from any distractions, from any negative influences. And then the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, told us every work that does not begin, or every important work that does not begin with Bismillah, remains incomplete. It's like it's been cut. And so starting your speech with Bismillah is not only a means for you to invoke the name and the blessings of Allah, but it also helps you to calm down. And it helps you to focus on the task at hand. And it also helps you to be mindful and to communicate that you are a person, you are a Muslim who is mindful of your words and mindful of your actions. The second tip in public speaking, connect with your audience. For you to be effective in public speaking, you need to have a connection with your audience. You need to be able to read the mood. You need to be able to read the body language. You need to be able to relate to their experiences, to their feelings. You need to speak to their context, their interests, their needs. And this can be achieved in many ways. Research into your audience uh, demographics, for instance, your audience interests is very important. Understanding the context of the environment in which your audience lives and operates is important. Understanding the theme or the event at which you're speaking at is important so that you're not out of context. You could be talking about something that is very important and very critical, but in a completely wrong forum. And so, you know, you leave people confused. Why are you talking about this here? What is the relation between this and that? You don't want people to be distracted like that when you're speaking. So it is important that you really can understand the context and that what you're speaking about resonates with your audience. Allah tells us in the same Surah to Nahl in verse 125 that call unto the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair exhortation and reason with them in the better way. And the Quran also tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 83 and speak to people good words. And so what we are learning from this is that in our engagements we should seek to be wise. We should seek to be measured in the words that we use. We should seek to be fair. We should seek to use reason. We should use language that is not only respectful, but is also clear, that is engaging, and that resonates with the context, with the values, and with the experiences of 
the listeners. Be kind in your speech. Don't engage in language that is so aggressive and so abrasive that you leave people with a bad taste in the mouth. Even when you want to deliver a tough message, you can deliver it with wisdom, with hikmah, so that the message reaches home without you offending people to the point that they don't want to listen to what you're saying anymore. The third tip, be concise and clear. In the Quran, Allah tells us in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verses 70 to 71, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will then amend for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained great attainment. The verse reminds us the importance of speaking with appropriate justice, of having clarity in our conversation in our speech, of promoting righteousness and therefore being honest in what we are speaking about. We must strive to be truthful. We should avoid exaggeration. We should avoid hurtful or misleading information. We need to c communicate with clarity, with precision. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, told us in a hadith that the best of speech is that which is concise and clear. You want to communicate in a manner that people understand what you're saying. And sometimes people are tempted. They want to show how, how much of an expert they are in a subject. So they use a lot of jargon and technical terms that no one understands. Now, one thing I learned some years ago is that one of the marks of expertise in a subject matter is how simple you can communicate when you're talking about that subject matter. How simply you can communicate, how simply you can deliver that message. Sometimes, you know, you, you hear somebody who's an expert in something, they make some, a subject look so easy, you tell yourself, I think I can also do that. I actually think I can also stand there and talk about this. I think I can go and study this because They've made it sound so easy. They've communicated it in a matter that is so simple. And that is one of the marks of expertise. And sometimes people stand and they mix something up and they complicate it and it is so intertwined. It's like a bowl of spaghetti. You don't know where it's starting or where it's ending. That is not necessarily a mark of expertise. Sometimes, sometimes it could be that the person isn't clear in their own mind about what they are talking about. Provide examples of what you're speaking about to illustrate your point. This also helps to create a connection. Tip number four, use the power of storytelling. The prophet, peace, be, uh, peace and blessings be upon him, used analogies. He used stories. He used anecdotes to effectively convey his message. The Holy Quran is also filled with stories about so many different things that teach us valuable lessons. And from this we learn the power of using stories when we are doing public speaking. So that even if we are using real life examples, for instance, we are using stories from what happened in the time of the Sahaba. We are using anecdotes to illustrate the point and to make the message more relatable. And these stories should be relevant. You know, it could be case studies, but we are not talking about lying. No, that's not the idea behind storytelling. The idea behind the story is to buttress the point you're making and illustrate the point. It is not for you to manufacture fanciful tales and build castles in the air. That is not the idea behind telling a story. When you can use a concrete example, of a situation that is relatable to what you're talking about, people can connect. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Yusuf, 
chapter 12, verse 3, we relate to you the best of stories. And these are not false, made up, conjured stories. This is real. What happened in previous generations? What did previous prophets experience? What did previous generations go through? They are real stories that teach us lessons and are very relevant for us now and into the future. Tip number five, be confident, be authentic, and be humble. Confidence and authenticity are key to building your personal brand, including through public speaking. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, told us, speak the truth, even if it is bitter. This means that the requirement for honesty and being genuine in our communication even if the view is not popular, is critical. And so don't be afraid to express your ideas, your opinions, as long as they are aligned to your Islamic values and ethos. We are not talking about just coming up with crazy ideas out of the blues that are out there that are completely in conflict with our Islamic values, no. So long as you're within the context of the Islamic values and Islamic ethos, and you have an idea that you think is going to add value, you're not speaking just for the sake of speaking. You know, somebody once said, don't just talk, say something, communicate, add value. Not that, oh, how many people were there talking? There were 10 people talking. You know, no one has any idea what was being talked about. It's just chatter, no but that you are speaking something that adds value. And so don't hold back. If you think you have an idea, share it. It may not be a groundbreaking idea, it, but what if it is? And even if it is not, it may add value to the conversation at hand. So share your idea. In the Quran, Allah tells us, in Surah Al-Luqman, chapter 31, verse 18, and do not turn your cheek toward people and do not walk through the earth exultantly. Indeed, Allah does not like everyone self-deluded and boastful. And so the reminder in this verse is on the importance of being humble. Even when you speak, speak with humility. Even if you are an expert and you have all these great public speaking and oratory skills, be humble. We should have confidence in our abilities as public speakers and in the message we are sharing, but we should remain humble. We should avoid arrogance. We should avoid boasting. We should avoid pride. Tip number six, practice and prepare. In a hadith, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, told us the one who is proficient in his craft will stand before kings and rulers. The emphasis here is on the importance of practicing and preparing and therefore seeking excellence in all that we do, including in public speaking. Don't just stand up and start speaking. Rehearse, prepare, put your points down, do your research, if possible, practice in front of somebody. Let them hear you speak so that they can correct you, so that you can see the response from an audience, and then you can see, maybe I need to focus on this, maybe I need to edit some things. That helps you, the practice helps you to improve your delivery, to build confidence, and to ensure that your message is clear and effective. Tip number seven, end with dua. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, told us, when one of you finishes speaking, let him end with a dua. Ending a speech with a dua not only underlines your Islamic values, but it also reminds your audience of their own relationship with Allah, that we keep putting this at the front of our mind. We start with Bismillah, we end with Alhamdulillah, you end with a dua. So, if you start something with Bismillah and you're ending it with Alhamdulillah, what do you think of what happens between these two words? At the very least, we pray that that helps to invoke Allah's blessings on us. Well, I cannot say at the very least, invoking Allah's blessings is a major thing. 
The point here is that what comes in between should be something that is value adding and inshallah that is blessed. You can use a dua that is relevant to your topic. You can use one of the many duas that we have in the Quran, in the Hadith, from the, 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 the shuyukh that we have. And you know uh, that we have a lot of, alhamdulillah, beautiful duas surrounding us um, that are used from the beginning to where we are now. And these duas were as relevant then as they are now. So let us use them in closing our uh, public speaking so that we end the, 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 the talk in a manner that still is seeking to invoke Allah's blessings at the end as we did at the beginning. In conclusion, public speaking is a key part for building your personal brand and making a positive impact in the world. But as Muslims, we want to be Muslim public speakers, which means that we should speak with honesty, we should speak with clarity, we should speak with respect for others, and we should seek Allah's guidance and protection when we speak, so that by His grace, what we are speaking about becomes of value and benefit to the listener. And by His grace, maybe Sadaqatul Jariya for us, that it continues to be of benefit way after we are gone and whoever had it can act on it and maybe pass it on to somebody else. I pray that by following these Islamic principles or these principles of how to make us better Muslim public speakers, we can improve our public speaking skills inshallah and that in that, mo in that way we then use our voices as a tool for making a meaningful difference in this world. May Allah give us all tawfiq in this quest. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.